After the success of Mountain Blade Warband and specifically its multiplayer components such as Napoleonic Wars and all the mods that came with it, there's been a lot of standalone games that have come off the back of this. First we got Hold Fast Nations at War. This was a standalone game from the Napoleonic Wars DLC and that went down great at first. It's starting to die off a bit now but maybe it's going to be held up later in the future once they're adding more things in. Next came War of Rights which was a standalone expansion for the North and South mod which is the American Civil War mod for Mountain Blade Warband and that is doing its itself very nicely at the moment. And finally I bring you the most recent one. This is Wigs and Tories, and judging by the name, it is based on the Wigs and Tories mod for Mountain Blade Warband. Now, it is based in the American Revolution, it is made by the same developers that made the mod, but they decided they wanted to go onto their own thing and make a new game. So I'm going to be bringing you a bit of information, a bit of footage of the alpha. Keep in mind this is very, very early. This is the earliest that we can actually play at the moment. So many many things are subject to change but this is very early stages of the game so keep that in mind while you're watching this video but I think there's some good ideas here and I'm gonna give my honest opinions on everything that I have seen so far first off like I said very early so there's a lot of bugs in it it's clearly got a lot of bugs things like dropping weapons sometimes I'll hop and you won't be able to pick them back up uh, I had things like I go through a bit of a wall sometimes the windows they the, the windows don't smash and stuff at the moment even though that's planning on having but they're just they're small things that can be fixed pretty easily and probably will be coming pretty soon there's also a nice little bug where your sword gets stuck on your pistol and if you attempt to fire your sword pistol it will crash the server which is an entertaining one but small things like that what happens with this what's really different to the mods is there anything that's actually expanded upon it well actually there is and in terms of mechanics, they're doing quite a bit with it. For example, now if you press a V, you can drop your ammo. This way it's easy to trade ammo with people instead of having to drop your hard weapon. You can still drop your weapon by pressing the G key, but V is dropping specifically your ammo, which is a nice touch as well. Like most of these games, you can press the tilde key to look around. This is actually binded to one, so you can look around like you normally do in games, but using the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out for some far looking or for some close shots as well. So that's something that is possible. C is the cheer button so you're able to raise your hat, raise your fist. P is also an insult button which I think is going to be entertaining in these public line battles and private line battles with lots of people on the field at once. But going on to one of the first cool mechanics that I really like and this is the flinching mechanic. Here if you get shot and the bullet misses but it hits nearby you as it goes past your face of course you hear the sound effect of a bullet whooshing past your face but also your character flinches and slightly to the side so you're going to be able to tell if you have a near miss with a bullet and it's quite a nice effect sort of helps with the immersion of the whole game as well i have to say though the game at the moment it's not the best looking game in the world because it's very early, but one thing that I do love are the smoke effects. I think the smoke effects are absolutely gorgeous in this game. And there's just something about it that just looks really, really nice, but I can't quite pin on what it is. Another new mechanic is the reloading mechanic. This is fairly similar to Napoleon it was, but it's got some different touches as well. Here, of course, when you're reloading, you can see in the bottom you have your gun icon. It will start off as red and it will slowly turn from red, go through the shades of pink until you get to white. But in between here, if you stop reloading any time from when you start to the end and you drop your musket, you can then pick it back up and you'll start exactly back where you left off. So the game remembers how much you've actually reloaded and you're able to carry on loading. This will be useful for, a, well, it'll be useful for a couple of things I can think of, even if you're just like, you need to quickly pick something back up, but you're halfway through loading. In Napoleonic Wars, you'd have to restart your load all over again, but this you don't have to. Also, I don't know how useful it would be in a battle, but you could do a thing where you have like your best shooters are all firing constantly and everyone else is loading the muskets for them. Them, then they can drop them down and when the shooters pick them back up they're all loaded they're all set so that's something that can happen i don't know how useful that would be in battle you might as well just fire as many volleys as possible but it's a possibility which is quite nice and of course even before you get to the white line there's a small bit when it just about turns white that you're able to walk off while reloading because of course normally you can't actually walk when you're reloading but just before you finish reloading you have a, a few seconds there that you can actually start walking. There's uh, some cool physics in it. I mean, I think the physics are still being definitely worked on. I, I went to the, the weapon tables and hitting them with the butt of your gun sends the pistols and the swords flying, which I think is quite hilarious. I don't know if that's going to be in the full game when it eventually comes out, but I think that's quite a hilarious little physics-y item. Also, a new thing. We've got tomahawks here. There there's a bit of a, a strange thing with the tomahawks at the moment. Um, I mean, they have said that they they might fix this. Uh, well, no, they have said that they will fix this because I feel like this is not. <laughs> I mean, I feel 
It's the left arm. It'll be fine, right? No one's going to be offended by that, are they? Ugh, I've already been demonetized at this point. Furthermore, pressing F is stun or pushing with the butt of your gun, as you probably saw when I was firing some of the ammo and the swords off in the distance on the melee table. So that's a new thing. And of course, you can still change to your melee with your muskets, which is pressing X will change to melee mode. In my opinion, the melee at the moment needs a bit of work. Um, obviously, it's still very early. Some of the hitboxes are a little bit weird. They, they've sort of made it so it's where your bayonet hits. Which makes sense, it just feels a little bit weird getting used to it. Maybe when I get used to it, it'll be better. Um at the moment, I feel like the melee needs a little bit of work. So, I spoke to Marks, who is developing the game, and I said, where do you want the game to be eventually, and what do you want to happen with it? So, of course, they want this to be more of a line battle, a whole community-driven game, but they want to keep it loyal to the fans, and that's something that I feel like Holdfast didn't really do. They got a bit carried away with the new game, and they, they did a lot of things that people weren't really that fussed about, and didn't really focus on what people cared about, which was the melee combat, very satisfying melee combat, and just satisfying feel to it, cavalry and movable artillery, which is all people really use in line battles, instead of they worked on like destructible terrain and uh, ships and things like that, which not many people really cared about that much and it meant that the player base has dropped down a bit more. So Marx is hoping to keep it a bit more loyal to the fan bases and they're hoping to make sure that it stays active once the game is fully released. So they want to have a lot more in depth with every single class, of course, you have your Brits and you have your trait, I mean Americans, and then they all have their subclasses within them and they will focus more about the outside gameplay to make public Play more enjoyable but they want to make it feel like you're immersed really in the line battle in the time where each individual person is there doing their own role but they're also helping towards a bigger cause you don't feel like if you weren't there it wouldn't make a difference it needs to be that everyone each has an individual role that is going to make you feel like you're actually doing something because that's what makes people stick around if they feel like they're actually making a difference otherwise they're just going to feel like what's the point of me being here so making sure that each class and each role has its own individual and unique aspect Aspects, and they all have something to do is a good thing to keep the game running and keeping it active now Of course I asked for a release date which is always a risky thing when you're basing it around mountain blade inspired things Don't ask for a release dates because they, they'll probably get angry at you But he said hopefully in about a year maybe less if they get some more funding though So that's something that might be happening soon But I'll definitely keep you guys up to date with the game so far a few additional things that I overheard is they're hoping to have wildlife I saw some of the trailers. They've got wildlife and things like that, which is quite cool maybe a little bit more I heard marks he was talking about he wanted more than just you go into an instance a line battle you do your battle and that's it he wanted a bit more like more open worldy well I, I say open not open worldy elements but where you do your battles but then you can go and hunting you can maybe like cook up a rabbit and you could have a camp with your guys and then you go off to battle in the daytime but then you go back to your camp afterwards so that's not a confirmed 100% thing, I just heard them talking and mentioning about that, so that's something that might be something that improves the game and takes it to the next level from what it is at the moment. But overall, I've got a lot of hope for this game. Of course, it's still very early, all we can see really are most of the basics, but I think it's got a lot of potential. What do you guys think? Make sure you leave your comments down below. If you want to go and support them, all the links will be down in the description so you can go and look at that. Thank you, Marks, for giving me access to the alpha. I'll make sure I keep you guys updated on everything that goes on with this game. But thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And until then, I will see you in the next one.